the soul. My name is Erich Skuman. Uh, good evening to and welcome to this um, live stream tonight. Um, you know, I'm very excited to talk to healthcare workers tonight as um, a healthcare worker myself. Um, so what I'm uh, sorry, my screen's just doing stuff. Um, why I'm talking to healthcare workers specifically tonight is because um, of the COVID-19 pandemic and that it's been going on for almost a year and people have been struggling and um, they've been especially um, working very hard in the front lines of this pandemic and have taken shots. Um, they've absorbed a lot of the stress. So my focus tonight is on is on looking after those people. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go through a couple of things tonight in um, and the idea is to give you some uh, of an idea of, of stress management techniques that um, and then burnout some talk about some things about burnout, compassion fatigue, secondary victimization, uh, vicarious traumatization and uh, to have a look at those things and um, the effects of those on you so you can identify where you're at and then the second part would be to just look at some practical things that you can do and also your organization i've got an hour so i'm going to cram some things into this hour obviously it won't be uh, sufficient i do have a burnout uh, prevention and recovery online program um, a workshop that I do present and um, you're welcome to go and have a look. I've also done a um, live stream on burnout, a separate one, but for this one I've done a lot of research on uh, the effects of COVID-19 on healthcare workers, so I've got some specific uh, inputs, but there will be correlations between the two videos. Um, now, um, tonight, um, I, first off, firstly I want to start as uh, part of my own story. Um, being a clinical psychologist um, and uh, I've been working in my own private practice but I also worked for government and hospitals here in South Africa but I've also worked in the UK so what I what I've experienced is, is I've I've experienced burnout and compassion fatigue and secondary victimization um, as a healthcare worker myself I've worked at emergency units uh, of various hospitals I've been on call um, I've been on the front line of a, a lot of those things and I've worked in private practice and at psychiatric hospitals. So I've had a lot of exposure to various kinds of uh, impacts that that healthcare workers experience. And I've also um, I've also offered compassion fatigue and burnout courses to people and uh, to nurses and occupational therapists and staff at um, at hospitals. So <clears throat> I've seen on the uh, first hand experience what's happened with people who have been exposed to a lot of stress. Being a healthcare worker, especially a doctor, a nurse, a medical staff that's working on the front line, but just in general, being a medical professional is already stressful. Um, so add COVID-19 to that and you have a double whammy. So you have additional stress. And now the organizations that are already um, understaffed and some would say underpaid. Um, so um, <laughs> I'm in Africa, lots of insects, you'll see. Um, so uh, those people um, are already under stress and the organizations are already battling. And now add COVID-19 and it is, um, it, it's just stretched. So what we find here is that um, and people are in organizations and um, and they've they've got a, their own stress source as well at home and in their life and then you add this additional burden on the on the country the world the economy and the organization and your work and your day-to-day -day schedule so there you stuck in there and you've got to just just keep your head above water and the idea um being a healthcare worker the idea is to help others um, but in the end, you are the one who suffers as well. So I'm going to go through some of this. Now, COVID-19, I mean, it uh, it has uh, affected the whole world, as I said. Um, and I think some of the concepts that I can just, uh, if I can give you some words, and I think we'll, we'll summarize of some of what we've experienced, is this uncertainty, fear, stress, radical change, pressure, You've experienced pressure and um, 
exhaustion. And then couple that with uh, financial uncertainty, being uh, shoved into new roles, uncertainty and of what you've got to do, new routines, new work schedules, uh, you know, health fears. So being afraid of those things and then the loss of lives. Now, um, a, bit, a healthcare worker is trained to help people medically uh, or within their profession, but they're not necessarily trained to deal with the effects of all that they are experiencing there on themselves. So how we usually experience stress is through our senses, what we see, feel, uh, what we hear, what we smell, sin, uh, smell, it's a very uh, strong sense, the olfactory sense, and then auditory, what you hear, and, um, and, and then as all of those things affect your body and it affects your, your mind. And now, a lot of these things that I'm going to tell you tonight will be familiar, but I hope that some of those things might be applicable to you tonight or today, wherever you're listening from, and, and that this with some of those, those things will just jump out at you and say, look, I need to uh, address that and I need to look at this. Okay, so um, just a little bit of my own story of COVID-19. COVID-19, uh, I mean, the lockdown happened. It was nice for me. I'm in private practice and I was locked down at home. I was not in the front line there at a hospital. Um, but then COVID-19 affected our family later on. And some of our family members have passed away. And in recent weeks, we've actually lost four people in our uh, family due to various illnesses. Suddenly, and um, my own wife got COVID-19 and I had to look after her and she was on oxygen at home and she was very ill. And um, a whole lot of our family members who were already medically at risk got COVID-19 and we were all just holding our breaths. So it was a really stressful time. Um, it had a, an impact on a lot of areas. Um, there was also a lot of positives that came out of it. So I'm going to share some of those later on. Um, so it's affected me personally and it's touched me. And um, and we've also got um, people in our own world who are healthcare professionals at the front line. And that is the, that is tough. So we hopefully some things might might help you tonight. So the question then is, how do I cope um, throughout this and maybe even thrive? So I've spoken about thriving in another video, um, and I'm going to add some of those things here. So uh, I've heard a, I heard a story where a man said, um, man was taking long walks at the beach every day of the year. And um, a guy spoke to him and said, oh man, I mean, you take long walks at the beach every single day? I mean, you got good weather, bad weather. I mean, how do you do it? He said, there's no such thing as bad weather only in proper clothing. Uh, that's, a, that's a good one because he's saying that the circumstances might change, but it depends on how you're dressed uh, and how you are equipped to deal with it. So that's what I'm hoping to give you, some equipment to win because you're in stormy weather. So you've got to have the uh, correct equipment. Now, um, let's have a look at uh, some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing. When you're when you're going, when you're under stress, there's a difference between feeling stressed and getting to a place of burnout and then getting to a place of depression and tra trauma where you are tra traumatized. But you might experience a whole lot of those things uh, simultaneously. So um, some of the stress, normal stress experiences that you get is feeling irritated, angry, uh, uncertain, nervous, anxiety helpless, powerless, and that also leads to anxiety and maybe even feeling uh, down and, uh, and, and where you start to lose motivation. You're not in the mood to go to work. You don't want to go anymore uh, because you feel tired, you feel overwhelmed, and later on you start to feel that you've had enough. Um, and it might lead to you feeling sad and depressed. Uh, you, you will start to find your, your sleeping pattern will be troubled because you'll, you'll be tossing and turning or waking up early or uh, finding it difficult to fall asleep. So those one of those three things. And, um, and uh, or insomnia, uh, that you cannot sleep at all. You are so tired, you want to sleep, 
you just can't fall asleep. And that obviously has a huge knock-on effect because it's, it just affects the next day and the day thereafter. I attended a, a neurologist um, talk on sleep the other day. And it was just so clear again how he highlighted the effects of sleep um, and the myriad of uh, illnesses and dilemmas that we experience because we are not sleeping. But um, you know when you are stressed, your whole body goes into the fight, flight, freeze uh, approach. Uh, these days they're also looking at maybe putting in an extra one and that is tend and care. And some people even go into a pleasing mode. Um, but most of us try, and most of the healthcare professionals actually go into a fight mode. They take control, they take charge, and I mean, that's what they're supposed to do. But that releases all those hormones, as you know, and then you are um, in that sympathetic nervous system. You are charged up, you're working, you're... And then how do you get out of that into the parasympathetic nervous system? How do you relax? And that's where we get stuck sometimes in that sympathetic nervous system because we're there so long um, and then we get burned out in that cycle. We actually do not close that off that cycle and we're stuck there. And the, the idea is what we then do is we either overwork ourselves or we start to procrastinate and avoid stuff. And, um, and, and, and it becomes a difficulty to balance these things. So what we'd rather want to do is we want to see how you can adapt to the environment there and um, start to think strategically, logically, and systematically. And then we also want to look at your organization and what they can do. Um, there will be some inputs for them as well, although not uh, comprehensively on, in, in this in, um, context here. Okay, so you know uh, you, you've got stress at work, but you've also got stress at home. Um, but some of the things that might af that affect you here at work, and especially for healthcare workers, is the heavy workload and um, the heavy workload and the long hours that they work. Sometimes uh, poor support from their organization, um, unclear expectations, especially about their role. What exactly is my role here? Um, because roles change uh, when, they're, when you're in a crisis or a role is adapted, or you've got to adopt another role suddenly. Um, and in the team, it might also create some confusion. And then some conditions might be dangerous uh, where you just do not have adequate uh, personal protective equipment and um, or some of the instructions were not clear. Now, obviously, you're trained, you know what you're doing, but you're dealing with a new kind of virus that you just don't know. Now we're a year down the road. So you've been dealing, you've learned a lot, you've handled a lot of stuff, and you've also absorbed a lot of stress. So you've been in this. You've, uh, your body has taken shots, your, your mind, your emotions. Now the question is, where do you find yourself? Where are you at at the moment? Are you okay? And how are we going to get you okay if you're not okay? And if you're okay, how are we going to keep you okay? Um, and then obviously in such a time, you will have conflicts at work and you know struggles between some of the power struggles and whatever between your co-workers. And then you might even in this last year, you might have experienced the death of a loved one, family member, divorce. Uh, maybe you lost your job in the healthcare sector or um, some of your some of your colleagues passed away um, or something happened with your finances as well. Or you contracted the illness and, it, and you're still feeling the effects of it. My wife has lost her sense of smell. Apparently, it will come back. But she st struggled with uh, tiredness for quite some time, that, uh, that chronic fatigue. And maybe you've all also got a health underlying health pro risk, you know, where you just are so afraid you're going to contract this illness. And then sometimes some things unexpectedly just happens, like it happened in my own life the last couple of months. So um, all those things, all those unexpected curveballs, hit us and they ask something of us. They place a demand on us. And stress happens when you are reacting to that demand. So the stressor is the thing happening to you, but the stress is your reaction to it. And that's also where your control lies or to a large degree, let me say that. Now, what are the problem factors, the personal problem factors, some of the things that people might uh, personally struggle with that sets them up for this. 
uh, additionally because now they're in this crisis but they are ill-equipped emotionally and mentally and psychologically it might be you might struggle and i've struggled with this a lack of proactive problem solving skills where you find it difficult to plan um, your own self-care and to solve problems as soon as possible you postpone them or you ignore them even avoid them i used to do those things you place the center of control outside of you, an external locus of control where the world is happening to you. Now, as a medical professional, if, if, uh, if you're doing that, that means you're going to say yes, 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 yes. You're not going to say no. You might even oscillate to the other side and start to become irritated. Like um, I dealt with a, a, a specialist physician a few weeks ago who... He was feeling the stress of COVID-19 on all of his patients and his own long working hours. And he was so irritable and he started to say and do unethical things that could actually endanger his patients. Um, and he, he became aggressive, verbally aggressive. Um, what something that, something else that somebody has is if you have an external locus of control, you tend to feel like a victim and you blame people outside of you and you blame other people for the dilemma that you're in. Now, some of the things that you're blaming other people for might be accurate, but it does uh, place you in a position where you are um, helpless if you're blaming somebody else. You are, you are in a position where you cannot actually take that control and do something proactive with it because you are blaming. Now, another thing is if you don't have a lot of support and um, if you have your, your own underlying health concerns or if you have trouble with the way that you approach your life in your thinking. So in cognitive therapy, we call it um, your unhelpful thinking styles. Now, some of the organizational dilemmas that we find is that um, if the institution's uh, primary focus is not on the professionals, uh, is obviously on the patients, but on it's more of a task-oriented, leaning over to more task, more money than than person-oriented. Then we find that they will they will undervalue their professional uh, professional people's well-being. So, for the organisation, it's it's important to realise that obviously, if you're the goose that lays the golden eggs will be the professional people <laughs> and uh, yes the patient is important and uh, the, the purpose of why you're there is important but you also need to look after your your instrument to attain your goal uh, the, it, it relates it reminds me of a story of a, a guy who was chopping down two people who were chopping down uh, trees with with axes and the one guy sat and sharpened his axe for quite some time whilst the other guy just hammered away and um, by the time this guy started to chop away he was finished before the other guy and so it's got to do with uh, attending to your people um, because they and obviously you know this but under pressure the organization is also under pressure the management's under pressure things have to happen very quickly and we're not always prepared for that so if you work out of guards and if you're sitting with a lot of hurt or broken personnel then it's time to say okay what uh, what can we do to now just look after them i know most of these um professionals especially healthcare professionals are driven people they are the old type a personality they are self-driven self-motivated and they place a lot of additional stress on themselves or they are the carers and the the, the gentle spirits um and those people usually tend not to look for help um, so it's not always so easy to help them, um, but you've got to put some things in place. So, okay, the, first, the research shows uh, if there's a lack of re resources, if you have like that, human resources, equipment, or knowledge of what they need to do, how they need to do it exactly, and, the, or, and, and to have all the effective equipment. And you know here in South Africa we have some shortages of some of those equipments. I mean, some of the COVID-19 wards that I've heard of, don't have air conditioning there. It's bloody summer here, 37 degrees. It is just horrific. And the staff's working under those conditions. Um, and they don't necessarily have all of the PPE equipment or they don't, they don't have the correct things 
a lot of dilemmas that place additional stress. And obviously, the main thing I think is the humans. Not a lot of humans. Uh, not enough humans. And um, and then the long hours, the heavy workload that is shown to uh, place that uh, serious stress on people. So okay, so for you, the idea here is as an organization, you also need to say, look, because if they if they have limited resting time. Uh, it will limit the quality of work and it will increase the mistakes. Um, and another factor that is shown that if they, the organization, if they, they have all these long working hours, they will have limited time with their families, that creates that domino effect of additional dilemmas. So what we've got to see here is uh, the World Health Organization has uh, some uh, uh, good inputs on this and they say that you need to focus rather on long-term occupational capacity than than a short-term crisis response. It's important, the short-term crisis response, but in the end, longer term is what, what we're looking for. Now, some people, after a year now of working and really working, and that is on top of your career and what you've done before that, you probably didn't take three months off right before this crisis because you knew, you knew something was coming. So you just went and uh, on vacation for three months. Oh, no. You were thrown with this and uh, it was in your face. So you've just had to hit the road running. And um, the consequences can be burnout. Now the uh, international, uh, you know, the World Health Organization, those talk about the burnout syndrome. And that when you have excessive and prolonged stress, um, that causes this emotional fatigue. And that, that causes that energy loss, that feeling of being weird, wear out you know you're worn out you're feeling fatigued um, and you're just tired and you start to feel fed up and you i'm and uh, you don't even want to go to work anymore in fact you feel you can't work anymore it's serious and um and your performance obviously diminishes alongside that and your concentration and your ability to to hold we call it your working memory to hold information in your mind. Now, if you've got to make decisions, think on your feet. You've got a chaotic environment. I mean, if you're tired of burnout, it just goes so much slower. You've got to repeat things. You've got to hold on to information. It, it causes additional stress. So if you've got that, if you've got burnout, it is time to intervene. Okay. Because it will affect, in the end, it will affect the quality of care that you give to your patients. Now, I burnt out a number of years ago. I, I seriously overworked myself without any pandemic running. Uh, I, I placed all of the stress on myself, um, chasing after money, not serving the Lord with my whole heart, um, being having a divided mind, meaning I was uh, saying one thing and doing another. My values wasn't in line with my values and with what I with my Christian faith so I was just running seeking with those things and it was causing this intense battle inside but I was um, overworking myself because I was not balanced as well and I didn't value my own health and I didn't value the longer term reason of why I'm here on earth what my life purpose is what am I doing here I'm just I'm not just here to help people today and overwork myself constantly i i forgot how what it meant to live now I, it took me a while to to inter, to, to, to receive or to activate interventions in my own life um, because when you're so tired um you you struggle to actually do something to help yourself so you get stuck you're like a um, an off-roader that is stuck in the mud and you're just spinning and it's difficult. So I got there and I was stuck and I needed uh, I needed the Lord to help me and and people and, I, and and it took some effort to get me out of that. And it took two years as well for me to recover from the burnout. So I still have reduced capacity and I've uh, and I've made significant changes and I'm going to touch on that a bit later as well. OK, so burnout is serious. It's not just feeling tired. It is serious and if you continue with just with this crazy workload and i mean some of the people who are listening do not have a, a lot of choice they don't have a lot of autonomy in their work environment to say look i can't 
it's difficult. You're under pressure. You feel bad towards your colleagues. You feel this sense of responsibility towards them. It is hard. You, if you're going to say no now, somebody else is going to suffer. So I understand it becomes uh, uh, really conflicting and it becomes paradoxical in its in its sense. So it becomes um, it becomes a catch twenty two because now how what are you going to do? You damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, but in the sense here, something's got to suffer, and you can't be the one who suffers all the time. Okay, so um, we've got to have a look at how to then deal with this. Because in the end, it ends up with a lot of anxiety and depression and addictions and even some personality changes. Um, and worst case scenario, uh, people take their own lives. So, I mean, that um, that is not what we want. Uh, and you get all of those other clinical disorders then that can come out of this. And... Some people struggle with sleeping disorders then after that. Or now I know it's really dark. I'm going to get to some positive things. Um, uh, weight gain. Some people lose weight. Maybe some people need to get burned out a bit. I don't know. Um, but it's about um, it's about recognizing now where you're at. If you want to go and do a nice questionnaire, go and do it. Look at the Mashlach burnout inventory. That is a gold standard for, for burnout. And it looks at three different areas of burnout. Your own personal feelings of, of, of achievement, the, the depersonalization, feeling of tiredness, and those things, the real burnout feelings. So you go and have a look at that. Uh, it's free online as well. You can go and look at the Mishlach Burnout Inventory. We will also place some links on Matters of the Souls page for that. Um, but in my workshop, I also do some of that. And so it'll give you a clear idea, but you will recognize some of these symptoms. And the idea here is as a mental health worker now, and as a nurse or a doctor or <clears throat> whoever you are, a physical therapist, a physiotherapist, you need to look after yourself in order to look after others. Um, so we need to uh, work with those people who, who are tired at the moment. Um, and um, and also prevent. So in the end, some people uh, end up with post-traumatic stress symptoms. Most people experience acute stress, which is then just for the first two to four weeks where they experience these symptoms of anxiety, um, where there's physical symptoms of anxiety and, and, and psychological distress. So, and it's because you've witnessed a lot of traumatic things. Um, having experienced extreme or intense loss the last nine weeks, um, in my own life, um, I know intense loss feelings. Now, if you've exposed to death, and I've heard at some of the hospitals, it was five to six people per day in the unit that passed away. We, um, it's a that's traumatic. It leaves you with a psychological impact when you're in a motor vehicle accident um, and your body hits the car. Um, then your body is impacted by the, the hitting something else. So this COVID-19 and the effect it has on your patients and your colleagues and the whole system impacts you. So it has an effect on you and it leaves an impact. You have to absorb it. And you know what the body does to impact depending on what it is and how it's impacted, but it affects the body and, um, and it takes time for the body to recover. So you've been emotionally affected. Now you might say, because you're a coper or a strong personality, you might say, no, I don't want to, blah, 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 it doesn't matter, right? I don't feel so impacted. Uh, and I know I'm going to, I'm stepping on toes now, but I know some of the doctors are like that. They just, they don't ask for help. Eh? They don't attend the burnout workshops. They never burn out. You're right, <laughs> you know. No, you do burn out like everybody else. Uh, you're not a superhero. You are a trained normal individual. Um, but you're not trained to avoid uh, all kinds of impacts. If you are in a motor vehicle accident, uh, you will also be affected. Your body will. So why not your mind and your psyche? Yes, you can be trained mentally to be resilient. And that's what I'm trying to do. But it does not mean that you won't be impacted. So the wisdom is to rather recognize your own symptoms and deal with impact and verbalize it and acknowledge it because you're not weak if you are affected. But it, I must be honest, it did take me a long time to acknowledge as this 
clinical psychologist, I'm supposed to be the person who helps others with psychological problems. And here I am struggling myself. So the feelings of failure and the shame was quite big. Um, and, I, and, and, and that kept me in self-isolation for a long time. So you need to acknowledge that it's okay not to be okay. And that once you feel that it is okay not to be okay, then you need to, and this was a hard one for me to reach out for help. Ooh, it was difficult. I felt like um, I was failing. Um, because it did seem like nobody else was struggling like this. <laughs> and um, But I must be honest, uh, it was a huge relief to just acknowledge that I'm not okay. It didn't mean that I am a failure and I am uh, useless, although I did feel so. Um, but looking back, I've definitely learned a lot and I've grown from it. And that's the that's what, what the great thing is. You might also react with emotional numbness, even some amnesia or dissociation where you block out certain events. Now, sometimes that is a psychological defense mechanism. It's okay for a, for a period of time. But if you if other symptoms pop out and you find it difficult to connect emotionally, to respond to your world in an appropriate manner, then we need to look at that. You need to find help for that. The thing of being a healthcare worker is that you're expected to know a lot and you're expected to be this expert, which you are, but you don't have to be the expert on every field. So it's, it's if you, you can be the expert on your field, but it's okay if you're not an expert on psychology, um, even though you've got psychology first year or even up to third year. You don't have to be an expert in that. You, you need to uh, also reach out for help. Um, if you've got secondary stress or compassion fatigue, those things are different, but it's the effect of giving and giving and giving and feeling tired because you've had so much emotional compassion with people that your own emotions are affected. And secondary traumatic stress is being a witness to other people's trauma, um, especially emergency responders who are on the scene there have a lot of that. <clears throat> yes, your personality might be made for this, and it's great. But wisdom says you need to learn how to deal with your own wounds and how to treat your own wounds. Um, if you had a physical wound uh, as a doctor or a nurse, you would probably treat it and treat it very well. So now you've just got to learn how to deal with your own emotional wounds because you've had exposure. Okay, so... Um, just for the organization, just pay attention to how you communicate to your team. Maybe uh, just give them accurate updates to lower their stress levels. Um, give them as much autonomy as is possible. They always say here, shorten the shifts, shorten the shifts. I don't know if it's really practically possible, but wherever you can do it and to, uh, switch around the shifts, especially the night shift people. I mean, I've seen in my practice alone, Lots of people with, who, who have been doing night shifts come up with bipolar, mood disorder, or any of those things that happen after a while. And um, and then uh, it, it needs to be a very safe place, um, especially medically, because so the research shows medical professionals are afraid of contracting the virus and spreading it to their own family and people who are um, at risk in their own families. And that's a big fear. Because if, you know, we talk in psychology about being an empty vessel. Now, if you're at work and you're not an empty vessel, that means you have all kinds of other things bothering you. Maybe this, maybe that, or that damn printer, it's not working or whatever. You know, you've got other frustrations. Those things, if the organization can sort it out, sort it out, it just clears their minds so that they can focus. It reduces stress. And um, obviously, if you can offer mental health services, it would be great as well. Uh, maybe even even socials among some of the staff, fun things, things that take them out of the work environment, that takes them to calm nature, uh, team building stuff, fun things that they, they've actually agreed upon doing. Okay, personally, what do you do personally to cope with this? Now, there are a lot of the things you will recognize. Let me tell you what I did personally before I burnt out. I oh, yeah. did sporadic exercise here and there, sporadic, sporadically coming in, going to nature, um, only joining events when I was invited, 
um, and work, 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 work. And then when I'm at home, serve, 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 serve my family. And that was it. And it caught up with me um, because life lost its flavor and its color. Now, the last year has been extraordinary. I understand that. But the, the, the reality is that we're not going to m move away from suffering. Um, even if this COVID passes, suffering will still be part of life. So in a sense, there's an ex there needs to be an acknowledgement of suffering is part of life. Um, and I'm going to suffer too, uh, to a lesser or greater degree, but somehow I'm going to suffer. And I just need to accept that not in a uh, sense where you are um, and passive and just accepting it and, and not really actively doing something about it but there but there's an acceptance of the reality but that does not mean that you lose your faith approach as well i'll look at that as well but it means that you um that, that you deal with the fact that suffering is part of life if it rocks your faith one needs to look at that because it, it's i think suffering and the problem of evil is those are the two things that people that rock people's faith in god and that um and talking about God, we'll uh, talk about him a bit later, but how he answers a lot of those questions and how he brings some stability in, in a chaotic situation like this. Some people uh, blame him, or, um, but if you blame him, ra rather than blaming him, why not look for answers um, instead of blaming? Blaming never works, not personally, not interpersonally, not uh, spiritually. Okay, so what do you need to do? You've got you've got various areas of your life. You've got a body, you've got a soul that includes your mind, and your emotions, and you've got a spirit. And you need to look after yourself on all those counts. Um, you might hear my family in the background. I am at home, so uh, life is happening around me. So what is happening is, um, is is you need to look at all those various areas. And then you've got finances, you've got hobbies. You've got relationships, maybe you're married, um, maybe you've gone through a divorce and then you've got um, your own health. So you've got various areas of your life to look after here. And then the, the first idea is to say, OK, where are you at in all those areas? And what do you feel is the area that you really need to look at first? Sometimes when you are so tired, you just feel like you want to run away or just sit and do nothing. And um, that's not uh, uh, that's the feeling that you've got, and that is the that's the experience. But that's not going to be the solution. So the solution needs to be that you start to do some things that are practical and doable, uh, even though they are small. So it is about um, doing those things that are small and practical. So let's start. With, I'm going to give you some ideas on on some of the things that you can do. It might be very simple. Um, but first of all, I want to ask you, in your stress management from the past, what have you done in the past that worked for you? What worked for you? Um, and in, during the last year, what were the things that really that you felt worked for you? Did you take um, a, a cat nap during the day? I mean, I used to do it 15 minutes behind my desk, close the door, tell people, I'm going to take a 15 minute nap. Um, and I trained myself to take a 15 minute nap. It does revitalize your mind. It does um, calm down the emotions, release some anxiety, uh, get your breathing back to normal. It energizes you and um, it does give you a small mental break. Um, and you can be trained to do that. Um, some mothers who breastfeed and who are so tired that they, and I've heard some nurses can sleep behind their <laughs> fingers. Um, they look like they're working, but they're actually napping. But but you need to arrange that with your boss or, or whoever is there that say, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and I'm going to sleep um, just, a bit, you know. Um, so what is happening is if you can, if you can apply some of those things that used to work for you and, and then look at some of the things that are doable at the moment. So the principles will be for you to, to, Take responsibility for yourself, first of all. I know this is happening around you and the chaos is around you, but you need to take responsibility in how you're going to respond. So you cannot just react here and just go with the flow and just do whatever is there and take on. And you need to stop at some point and say, wait, let me think 
what am I doing? How am I going to do this? What's happening? Talk to your your uh, your team. Talk to what your managers. Talk to those people and say, okay, let's just take stock. Even though it's just, we don't have a lot of time, let's just quickly take stock. Where are we at? Where is everybody? What do you need? What do you need? Let's just figure out where we're at and let's make a plan um, on how to uh, apply this. Now, I'm not underestimating your intelligence here. I understand a lot of you have uh, done this and you are coping well, but um, some of these things might be applicable. So what you what you what you can do is you can um, you can go and have a look at what is it that you need now. Do you need physical rest? You might feel like you need all of these things, and that's okay, you know. Um, and I think you do. I think you need physical rest. I need think you need an emotional break of the situation, um, and you do need um, just to get away for a while. One thing that we don't want you to do is to stay in that situation just doing the same things repeatedly uh, and because I've heard this week of healthcare workers that have ended up in psychiatric hospitals uh, with severe depression and anxiety and um, and that's that's a pity because when you end up there I mean that means that you've absorbed quite a number of things for a long time and there was not either it, it was not your own personal effectiveness and the effectiveness surrounding you the organization now, i'm not trying to make you feel guilty here or blame you it might uh, it might feel like that but the idea is to rather than say if you are there even to say okay where to from here what what can i start to do now i know energy is low i know you might feel oh i don't feel like it but i can but 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 doing something proactive and positive each step you take is a step closer to feeling better I'm an example of that, and I do feel better, and I must tell you, my life's changed. I've made significant changes as well over the course of a number of years. So what's happening is, first of all, we look at practical small things. You take responsibility, and then you look at what is there that you can control. You remember the serenity prayer? Control the controllables. So you look at the controllables. What can you control? Um, ask yourself, what is there that you can do? And you know what you can do is you you can control your time off most of it you know if you've got children you've got to contract with your with your husband or your wife um you've got to contract with them and meaning you've got to arrange with them and say what is what's the needs of the family what is the need of the work at the moment um and and how are we going to work this out so you've got to talk that through with your with your family they are very important at the moment. Your social support structure is crucial. Your family, your friends. Now, I understand we've had this huge social distance and masks and whatever. But even if it's a WhatsApp call, a video call, Zoom, whatever, you've got to, you've got to uh, connect with those people and then contract with them, especially your, the people around you. What we saw during this COVID-19 time when we were in self-isolation and my wife was so ill we had wonderful friends who came to support us I mean they would just drop off food over there and but um, we asked they would ask how can we help you and we would say if people are not really clear as to what your needs are tell them ask them um, in Afrikaans we have a saying that means you can ask it is free to ask and you can also refuse it's also free to refuse to say no. So, I mean, asking is, 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 is a healthy thing. As a professional person, you sometimes feel like, no, I don't ask, I tell, or I do it myself. So, you are not an island. Eh? You can't do everything yourself. So, you need a team around you, personally, at your family, and at work. And then, um, what you also then need to do is to say, look, um, I need to I need to start to look at the various areas of my life and do something specifically for your body. Um, what I've now done is I've said let's try and stick to some routine here. Um, it's interesting if you look at the research on sleep that you can uh, that you will experience um, jet lag symptoms if you don't have, have a, a, a regular routine of when you go to bed. Now, if your routine is a bit, uh, you know upside down at the moment because you're working with all of these things um try and maintain some control there what how can you control that what can you do at your with your 
your health, your exercise. If you can't go to the gym, you don't have a lot of time. What can you do, especially with eating as well? I know, um, you know, takeaways, fast food is so um, it, it, it is so easy. But do that once a week or then twice a week. But, but for the rest, how can you get some other people to also assist you with this? If you need to pay for something temporarily to, get, to help you, do it now because it's an investment in your body. Um, it's an investment in your health and that's going to take you through this time and then get you to a place where you can earn some more money later on as well. You, you don't want to end up being damaged. Now, if you are damaged, I was damaged. Here I am functioning, talking to you. Do I look a little? No, I don't fully know. So, okay, and then you need to look at your, uh, at your family relationships. If you can spend some time with the people you love and talk to them. Um, tell them about your life. I know you can't talk to them every day. You can't tell them all the sad stuff. I also can't. And I've got a lot of sad stuff. So I've got people in my life, some colleagues, some people outside of work who are colleagues. And I've got mentors and I've got friends on uh, people whom I follow, people that follow me. But I've got people on the same level as well. So build that network around you. If you don't have energy, go to the first person and a person that you trust and at least start there because that will already give you energy and then um and then you need to look at your um at taking regular breaks you need to take breaks between shifts at work you need to take breaks get out of the office go and look at the blue sky if that's all that there is if there's one tree look at it you know you need the greenery you need the actually the uh God have designed nature in such a way that it relaxes us. Um, listen to beautiful music. <clears throat> try to try to get some humor in there. I, I spend time sometimes just looking at humor. It sounds crazy, but your brain needs a break. Doesn't mean you're insensitive. It just means you need to um, have an emotional rest. Um, and laugh if you can. I know it's hard to sometimes laugh in difficult circumstances. But even if you take an evening off and you say for tonight, um, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to have um, a nice bottle of wine, not seven. Careful for addictions. When you're under stress, we tend to gravitate to things that fix us quickly. Uh, addictions and medication and whatever. Those are the things you have to run from. Rather run to the Lord. Run to people that support you. Run to those things, the warm bath the go and take a swim um <clears throat> go to the gym even if it's once a week um yes you've paid for it hey i pay for it and i go three times a week how's that probably the only person but in any case so it's important that you take those small brain breaks um and that you take regular weekly breaks and your phone and you do need breaks where you don't when you're not on call, on call i was on call at an emergency unit for a number of years and i mean you're you're tense all the time you, your mind's just turned on no no uh give your people it's a, at least a 24 hour break per week where they're not on call and they don't have to be called you're not going to get hold of them um and they can just get away and then a break every uh few weeks where you get out of town and you go and go and do something that you really like. Another thing is trust your own gut, trust your training, trust what you've what you've learned, and and do ask questions, do read up those things. But also, um, if you're really incompetent and you don't know what you're doing, get more training. But if you <laughs> most of you will be competent, just you also need to trust your own training. Um, and it's okay to feel the stress, to feel the pressure. Those things are okay. And especially from a Christian point of view, you're under grace. You're not under condemnation. So come back to the Lord if you've messed up, if you've blown it at work or at your family, just come back to him and, uh, and, and stay with him. So take care of your spiritual life. Spend time with him every day, even if it's five or ten minutes. You need it. Um, yes, go to church because you need it. Even if it's online, you need to receive so your tank is there, you're giving out, you need to fill it up. It's a science. And, and another thing is, it's your body. Um, you only have one. 
can't exchange it. So, um, so your co your colleagues and your workers as well, they only have one body. So one needs to really look after the body. So set up at the organization, set up stuff, get them some uh, decent drinks and food or whatever is available so that it is there. It's not difficult to get a hold of it. Um, and look after them, create an environment that is that is positive. Bring in plants and nature if it's possible. Um, and then another thing is that you also do need to um, uh, take pre precaution of yourself medically and um, have all things that you you need to look after yourself medically as well if you need some medical support and then boundaries this is an important principle you're responsible for yourself and your family but you're responsible to your patients and colleagues um, to the organization you're not responsible for them it's a distinction that that once i understood it and i've applied it numerous times to say look that means uh, my priorities are different for my family and my own health and for my patients. Your patients are important. Your work's important, obviously. But you do need to balance that. Um, yes, you can't lose your job. But, uh, your family needs you to have the job as well. It's part of it. But they, And I know it's a difficult balance, but you, you do need that. You, you need to understand where you're responsible for what and towards what. And then... Um, what we want to say is there are a lot of other things that you can do, and that is breathing exercises. That means just taking a break, learning to breathe, because once you get stressed, you have shallow breathing. So learning how to breathe in and out and maybe get a counseling session here and there if you if you need it. It's not a shame. Um, I've been to numerous. I've been for years of counseling. Now I'm a psychologist and uh, but I mean, I've been my me and my wife's been for counseling, so we've been we just go you drink the medication that you prescribe, and um, and then use the services that's around you. And um, another thing is that basic little things, né? exercise regularly. You need to remove yourself from that working environment, and and maybe go during your lunch time and go and just walk, just get your body moving. Um, it, it, it can be low impact exercises. You don't also have to do the strenuous exercise because especially when you're under stress, your body doesn't need additional stress. So I know some people push themselves when they are stressed and they need to push themselves to relax, but the research shows take it slow, you know, and work it up slowly and take breaks from social media and watching the news. I mean, rather rather box that in and, and, and just say, I'm going to take, I'm going to watch it between this and this time. I've just, I've minimized that and it's just cleared my mind and try to get familiar routines of waking up and doing stuff with your family, get all of those things in a routine. I understand some people say, no, I hate routines, but look, your brain works with routines and structures. You work with files and numbers. Life is layered. You know, you, you've got layers everywhere. So layers and boxes. You can schedule unscheduled times, you know, and, um, and then communicate, talk, say at work what you need, say no, if you want to if, negotiate, if it's possible, um, push back. I'm not saying be rebellious and insubordinate and get yourself fired, you know, but talk um, and just take it and don't fight it out. Uh, if you're aggressive, you're also going to get into trouble. But the idea is here, when you're stressed, I know some uh, managers will victimize you if you say you're stressed because now you're not coping and they judge you for it. Um, and then it's maybe a possible sign. Some people need to leave their organizations. Some people need to leave their jobs. So what I did is I left the uh, consulting business there and I, and I changed over and started this non-profit organization in ministry called Matters of the Soul and um, changed uh, uh, the location of where I practiced from, changed this, changed that, and it's made a huge difference for me. It's had um, consequences financially and those things, but I've seen the faithfulness of the Lord and I feel a lot more life um, and purpose. And I, and I and I my spiritual life also grew. My faith grew, and I've got a lot more peace, really. And I've got lots more time. So the idea is sometimes you need to you need to make radical changes. Now I'm not trying to get you know if you say, hey Eric, now you're getting rid of my personnel. I'm not 
trying to do that. The idea is to say, um, make the changes that's necessary, you know. And I know it's easier than it sounds, uh, you know, it's easy to say it, but it's difficult to do it. Um, but you do need to, you do need to sometimes reflect on these things. Um, but then if there's one thing that you can do every day that equates to playing, um, doing something that is fun, one thing, just do one thing every day at least that is fun and try to develop that attitude of gratitude, you know, and the half full glass um, to try and also see what is working, what is happening at work that is also making a difference. Um, highlight the patients that actually um, got through this. Highlight, keep reminding yourself of the bigger picture. This is a marathon indeed, but remember this is also like a book. It's a chapter in a book and it's a page in a book. Maybe this is a whole chapter in the book this whole time, but the chapter will close at some point and it will go over to the next chapter. So it's discerning the season. It's a difficult season, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to go through it, but you've got to go through it day by day. So that also gives you an empowerment. 24 hours that you've got to cope of which hopefully eight you spend in bed. And I know you don't, but um, you actually need it. Um, but then, yeah, and I understand there's not a lot of time for children then and for this and this and that. Where am I? Must I get the time? I understand, I understand. Um, but um, at least sleep at, when you do have the days off then. And don't sleep that. <laughs> don't sleep the whole time. Do other things as well. I know there's laundry to be done. You've got to go to the shops and do your 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 um, grocery shopping and those things. But, but um, try to do those small little nice things that you... We had dinner tonight outside um, on the lawn uh, in South Africa. We have a nice summer that's uh, six to eight months long. So it's nice. And um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change my live streams to another evening because the, by Thursday evening I am flat batteries. So and um, try to try to do those small things that you know work for you. Um, some of the some of the research shows no longer than 12 hour shifts just to remind you um, try to rely on your team members if they're useless complain do something about it um, if you can write about your experiences talk about your experiences somewhere and um, and then get to a place where you can, to do something and relaxes your body try not to boost your body with caffeine all day long it's not good uh, it's not selfish to take breaks. Um, you need to negotiate with others as well. But um, yes, everybody needs to be uh, needs some breaks, but um, it's not selfish. And working all the time doesn't mean that you're making a, a greater difference. Or working less than doesn't mean you're making less of a difference. It means that you want to be effective in the time that you're working. Um, and remember that you are a team. There are lots of other people that can also come in. Because just now, tomorrow, you pass away and what's going to happen to your position? They'll fill it. So, they'll fill it, you know. Okay. So, you need to just be careful of compassion fatigue. Um, and once you, if you are fatigued and, and you're struggling with maybe depression and anxiety, um, it's good that you now take, you need to take time off. You need to, to rest. You need do need to get to a place where that is addressed. I want to share a Bible verse from you from Hebrews 6 that says, for God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you've worked for him and how you've shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Here you can see people cared for other believers and, they, and the writer is reminding them of how faithful the Lord is and that he is going to reward them and he, he sees what you're doing. And um, then Psalm 145 verse 14 says, The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. So, if we're struggling, we're falling, it's hard. The Lord is also there to help you. It might be a foreign concept to you, but it's okay. Um, you start to reach out. Okay, so I've said a whole lot tonight, and I've obviously got a lot more to say. I can think I can still carry on for two or three hours. But please post some questions to me, because I do have um, Ask Gary or question and answer videos that I'm going to post See if you've got questions, please do. And please have a look at my website as well or the YouTube channel, um, Matters of the Soul. Lots of videos there as well. And I'm going to continue to 
um, do some additional work on on coping and and you'll find that um, <clears throat> there will also be some other courses available I, I do have a self-care course as well okay god bless you all of the best it was nice spending time with you tonight cheers